What? What was that? What was that ball game? If you're not getting heart palpitations in April 8th, are you really a Mets fan? How you doing, everybody? Spam those W's in the live chat right at me now. Mets win a roller coaster, a heart palpitation game. 8-7 to seven is your final. We're breaking this bad boy down. We got plenty to get into. Brandon Nimmo did what? DJ Stewart did what? That actually just happened? <laughs> that actually, Julio Tehran, Reed Garrett, Jake Diekman, Drew Smith, Jorge Lopez, Cole Solcer. These are your pitchers and you win? You win? You absolutely win. Spam those effing W's right now. In the, let me, let, la, la, la. Let's get some hype in the chat. Let's get some hype in the chat, everybody. That's what I want to see. Spam those W's right now. Spam them, spam them, spam them. That was a whirlwind of a ball game, everybody. If you're not familiar here, you're probably thinking I'm an absolute psycho. And on days like today, I for sure am. We were all nail-biting at the edge of our seats together as the Metropolitans take game one of a four-game set against the Hotlanta Braves in Hotlanta by a final score of 8-7. to seven. Even if this is the only win the Mets get this series, I do not give a rat's ass. This was such a whirlwind, crazy ball game. Didn't even use Edwin Diaz in the ninth, and of course, it was anything but easy. Jorge Lopez looked like batting practice but they got the job done they did what they need to do get that damn w's in the chat right now people on replay same applies we're about to break this all down folks cue the music let's play the jingle baby if you don't know we got our post game jingle the volume is a decent amount higher than this and i haven't edited it properly in time so actually 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 i, I scratch it maybe maybe i can fix it by going halfway on that but here, folks, let's listen together. Let's listen to the Wardy and Wham post-game jingle after a big, big, big W like we just witnessed. Let's do it. Let's do it. Is there no jingle running? Jingle should be running. I am sweating bullets. B-U-L-L-E-T-S. Did I get that right? Yes, sir, I did. Let's lock in. Let's go. How we feeling, all you beautiful guys and gals? Welcome back to the channel. The Metropolitans just won an absolute whirlwind of a ball game by a final score of 8-7. to seven. In today's show, we're going to go over the key highlights, as you're seeing there. Brandon Nimmo single-handedly dominating the Atlanta Braves today. First start in center field goes back to the Brandon Nemo, the best we've seen yet. Maybe he needs to stay there, I don't know. What I do know, the Mets got a win that they absolutely felt like they were not going to get whatsoever. But this Mets team, without expectations, with lower expectations, they were grinding it out. They got the job done. You put up a four-piece on Charlie Morton in not even six innings? Is there a God? It feels like there is right now, even after, and I mean even after, the Truly dog shit officiating we had from both sides of the plate. Marcelo Suna getting a strike three call literally at his ankles. Then you see the ump say, oh, you know, it's fair. Now, no, it's foul. Now it's fair. On a ball to Orlando RC at the third base, uh, that uh, uh, Brett Beatty. Very frustrating. That led to a run. Horrendous officiating. Shout out to the umps for doing absolutely nothing right. If it wasn't for the Mets, again, having big boppers today the way that they did. Including DJ Stewart. DJ Stewart. Like, what? I am sweating bullets. I'm so pumped right now, guys. I'm so pumped. I appreciate that, Mike. Thank you so much for the kind words, my friend. Love you too, brother. Let's, guys, you know what we got to do? We got to do it, especially because Braves fans, my Braves fans that show up that are respectful as well, that, you know, that I dish it a lot and I can take it. I appreciate my Braves fans that follow me, but I'm sorry. We have an old tradition on the channel, all right? And it's from one specific donator in particular. I don't see them here at the moment, but how it goes is on three. If the Braves suck, give me a hell yeah. We all know the Braves don't actually suck. The fact that the Mets even won this ball game is beyond a miracle but we're gonna take these small little victories because we have not had many of them over the past calendar year on three with me spamming in the live chat right now people on replay spam in the comments down below people on twitter spam it in there too on three ready one two three 
Hell yeah! Oh, oh, we needed that. I need this is this is I'm not this is my equivalent of a World Series right now because of just how horrendous this team has been the past year plus. We've had no entertaining baseball. It feels like the Mets didn't have a win of this caliber against an opponent like this once last season. Not even once. They finally go in Hotlanta and shut everyone up again it was not an easy game it was a tremendous game this is the kind of baseball i want folks even if the mets are going to give up runs even if they're going to lose ball games make it entertaining give us a reason to actually want to watch these games you've given us a reason fantastic overall game today where yes a lot went wrong but still, Julio Tehran doesn't even go 2.2 innings as doesn't go beyond that as your starter and you still went eight to seven yeah, let's go. It's shades of 2022. What a win. 100%. I actually disagree with that, Yoshima. You want to know why? The 2022 Mets win this ballgame 8-7 to with five infield singles. This Mets team today had two guys that stuck out like a sore thumb in their lap that provided the offense. And one man, not named Brandon Nimmo, that went... Three for five today at the plate. Yeah, it's Brett Beatty. Yeah, he's heating up. Yeah, he's looking good. 333 average, 802 OPS. You'll love to see it. Get some hype in the chat. Get some hell, hell yeahs in the chat. Guys, I didn't make the graphic in time because I wanted to go live right away. You know what, though? The star of the game, as a surprise to absolutely nobody, is Brandon F. Nimmo for being an absolute dog. This man decided, you know what? I don't feel like I want to hit one bomb. I want to hit two on the second one against AJ Minter. Lefty on lefty. Love to see that. Dave Dave, thank you so much for the $5 holla. Dave says, lucky win. Mendoza stinks. Nimmo was great. We'll take it. We'll take it, Dave. Thank you for the donation as always. Mr. Delightful, great member. All my great members in here. And you didn't even use Diaz. You didn't even use Diaz. Holy guacamole. I'm sweating bullets right now, folks. Let's break down what was this insane ball game. The best ball game by far we've seen so far this season. Just pure entertainment level was through the roof with this one. That's what gets me so pumped about it. But, folks, let's break it down together, everybody. You boys got the notes. We got the highlights. You know, the winner, the player of the game is, of course, Brandon Nemo there. Folks, how are we feeling? What's the hype level? Did Everybody, did you watch the entire game like I did? The Mets punked the Braves. They absolutely did. GG, Michael. Appreciate you chiming in the chat. Again, my Braves fans first chiming in watching live in a replay. Appreciate you guys. Again, I know we have a lot of Bra Braves followers here. I know a lot of them love to see me in misery. So this one especially feels good. But for the ones I've always been OGs, I've always been respectful no matter what. Love you guys too. Means a lot. But my Mets fans, let's break down this ball game. Enough of me just having my initial reaction, even though I know you'll get, you guys like it. And I know I'm sweating bullets. And I th know the heart palpitations go... Let's break down this ball game, shall we? I don't know. I, I, I Seriously, I feel like I just pounded a freaking Red Bull with the way that this game gave me energy. I was literally, every pitch for the final two innings, looking at my girlfriend, laying on the bed. I'm just sitting here like yelling the entire time, the entire time, looking at Drew Smith. Please, for the love of God, get out of this jam. Jorge Lopez, let's not be batting practice, right? We're going through these emotions together, are we not? Laugh at that, John Smoltz. Fuck John Smoltz. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Pump it. I'm pumping the brakes. Braves fans are going to get upset with that one. I apologize. But uh, seriously, though, that Braves broadcast, too, in general, can't stand, especially when they have, you know, Chipper and everyone in there, too. It's not like that every game, but you know what I mean. Uh, oh. All right, folks. Breaking down the ball game. It starts in the first inning. What a crazy, crazy game, folks. Let's just look at the pitching. Let's just start with the pitching. Look at the pitching. Julio Tehran. What if I told you Julio Tehran started this game going two innings, two shutty innings, two shutty innings. Third time around, I don't know how to pitch anymore. That's what he said. Frankie, thank you so much for the five dollar. Frankie says, just left the game. Hell yes, Frankie. Rub it in their damn faces. You should be embarrassed if you're a Braves fan to lose to this Mets team. It's true. It's a fact. We have little expectations this year. We just want to make playoffs, folks. Mets never won this game last year. Never won this game, especially in this fashion. Love that. So happy that you're at the game too, Frankie. Let's get some hype in the chat. What was, um, Also, what was the ump today? The umps were horrendous today. They were below pond scum. If I was back there, I would have done a better job, and you all know that's not true. I see you, Ch PK. I know. I know. Again, I know it's going to bother some people. I know. I know. Let's talk, though, everybody. In the first inning, Brandon Nimmo with a single. Francisco Lindor with a fielder's choice. Brandon's first of one, two, with three, four hits on the day. Love to see that. Alonzo with a bad strikeout. I love you, Pete. You have been playing like so bad offensively right now. You have zero hits this entire road trip. You're now what? 0 for 18 at least this road trip. 
offensively, you're so lost at the plate. Defensively, you're still making plays, which I, which I appreciate. At least pick us up there. But offensively, Pete, you have been a glaring hole. Even with Lindor with his hiccups lately, at least he broke out in, in that final game against the Reds. Pete, it's your turn now. If this means we have to give you a standing ovation over the weekend, so be it. We need to get you right in a walk here especially. You should be raking every single game and day of the week, Pete. You are so lost at the plate right now. You swung at a pitch that was literally Javi Baez-esque three balls out of the zone and your final at-bat today, Pete. We know you're better than this. You know you're better than this. Snap out of it. Thank you for the donation, Anthony Viola. Anthony says, much needed win. Mets look dead after four. Then, whoa, what the hell? They came back. Exactly. Great win, boys. 100%. Thank you so much for the donation, my friend. I really appreciate that. But as we advance further here in the ballgame, folks, let's break down the following. Pete Alonzo with a bad K again. That does it on a strike him out, throw him out. Again, Lindor was there on first base with a fielder's choice. He tries to get a second base. He's thrown out as Pete Alonzo strikes out on a high fastball. Mets no runs in the first. The bottom of the first, Austin Riley with a single. Matt Olson with a strikeout. That does it. Nice little K there on Olson. That was a generous call by the ump. A lot of those that we saw today, which was bad for both sides ultimately. But still, Julio Tehran in his first start in a couple weeks after being picked up from the Baltimore Orioles this spring training. Of course, he opted out of the contract, signs here. Major League contract, $2.5 million with another million incentives. He's pitching against his former club today. First two rounds, great. Third round, not so much. As we then get to the top of the seventh, uh, pardon me, bottom of the second, Ozuna with a single, but that's all she wrote. For now, we get to the top of the third, everybody. Jeff McNeil with a single on his birthday. Love that, Jeff. He had some good at-bats today. Best at-bats I feel like we've seen from McNeil so far this season. Very encouraging. Hope we see more of that. Joey Wendell, who got the start in the nine hole today, while McNeil initially started today in left field. Yes, Tyrone Taylor and Harrison Bader were both not in the starting lineup, but Tyler coming in later in the game, Taylor rather, would be absolutely massive in the Mets still getting this victory. Without Taylor, that doesn't necessarily happen here, but Wendell would have fielder's choice. Brandon Nimmo with a walk. Mets are not able to convert there with a couple on, and that does it there for the third. In the bottom of the third, Jared Kelnick, the former Mets top draft pick with a walk. Ronald Acuna Jr. with a walk, and this is the problem, folks. You walk your nine and your one hitters there. Ozzy Albies rips a no-doubt two-run double to give the early lead to Atlanta. They're up to nothing in this one, as we would see. Marcelo Zuna says, you know what? Baseballs, yes. I know they're not the only thing that I beat. I'm going to go rip one. It's 4 nothing. Yes, I said that. Yes, he's a schmuck. Yes, I can't stand him. Yes, it's 4 nothing at that point. Braves with the lead. Harris then with an infield single afterwards, continuing to frustration. Arcia with a single, and then that brings Reed Garrett in the game. Garrett gets a strikeout, I believe, to end the inning there. Reed Garrett. Can we just talk about a dog for a second? Reed Garrett goes 2.1 shutty today, allows one hit, 5Ks. He now has 5.1 scoreless innings for the Mets. This guy was caught up as an extra man just a couple days ago in the Detroit Tigers series. He has the first Mets win this season from a pitcher. Yes, that's true. And now Reed Garrett, who didn't start the year in the Mets pen, has 5.1 shutty. Can we just get a round of applause for Reed Garrett? Like, if we're going to name a player of the game that is not offensive, it is 1,000% Reed Garrett. Because without Reed Garrett, the Mets are not staying in this ball game, and they do not win more than likely. So shout out to Reed Garrett, fantastic stuff from him today. Love, 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 love to see it. So hyped. Love that. Man, guys, I haven't reacted like this in so long. I feel like I haven't, I, I feel like I haven't even reacted to this for one Mets win last year. Not even one Mets win. Even when they had their series against the Rays, even when they had their sweep against the Guardians, there was nothing like this. There was no energy like this. Like entertainment level through the fucking roof. Love it. As we advance further on in the ballgame, folks, and again, that's where you got from all the pitching stats, of course. But as we advance further into this one, we get to the top of the fourth. Mets are down 4 nothing. Pete Alonzo with a walk. Beatty reaches on an error. Marte with an RBI single brings in the first round of the game. Shout out to you, Star Stud Mar uh, Marte, for continuing to hit the ball well. DJ with a double play to end it. When this happened, folks, I tweeted it right away. DJ Stewart needs to be off this team. All right? What are we doing here? Why is this schmuck who has no hits this season, who just cracked the roster because the Mets decide, you know what, we couldn't find anyone to really pick up and be, fill in your roster spot. J.D. Martinez will be with us soon enough. And by soon enough, I mean at least a week away now still. Let's just have D.J. on the team. He's done absolutely nothing. But when I tell you a man made me eat my words, D.J. Stewart made me eat my words. Let's talk about it. <coughs> Bomb the fourth. Two outs. <coughs> Albies with a single. 
We get to the top of the fifth, everybody. Jeff McHits with a walk. Joey Wendell, what a walk. Uh oh, Charlie, you're looking a little shaken there. Not the Charlie Morton that I'm accustomed to seeing carving us up with that curveball. Miss me with that bullshit. Not seeing that today. As we advance further in this one, Brandon Demo says, Sayonara, how you doing? You're out of here. Three run shot. That ties the ball game. Mets have a 4 4 ball game in this one. I'm jumping out of my seat, Brandon. Thank you so much for being the absolute beauty stud that you are. I know Jesus Christ is very happy with you today as you always point to the sky after everything you do. He is pumped. Let's go, my Christian man. You'll love to see it. Tie ball game 4-4. We'd see basically halfway through this one, everybody. Halfway through this one. Then as we then get to the fifth, the bomb, the fifth rather, Olsen with a walk. Ozuna with a strikeout. Terrible call. When I tell you that you literally could have been Helen Keller behind home plate today and made a better strike call than that, you certainly could have. At the ankles of Marcelo Zuna, it's called strike three. But hey, it couldn't have happened to a better person. So there's that. Uh, Marcelo Zuna strikes out there as we get to the bottom of the fifth. Harris with a K. Alvarez throws out. Olsen trying to steal second base. Shame on you, you schmuck, trying to run on the best young backstop in baseball. And Mr. Francisco Alvarez. We then advance to the sixth inning with two outs. DJ Stewart with a walk. Clearly swung on a check swing too, might I add. Again, the officiating was absolutely dog shit today from both sides of the play. It doesn't matter if you're the Braves or the Mets. Everyone got screwed today in certain ways. DJ here gets a favorable walk, and that would be... You know, nothing would come of it, but it was nice to see at least. Bummer then comes in, which is a bummer. He didn't do anything, though. We get to the top of the sixth then. Oh, uh, pardon me. Bomb of the sixth. Solzer comes in. Solzer, of course, Cole Solzer was called up. Right-hander that has a little bit of a wicked slider sign on a minor league option, minor league uh, deal this offseason with an invite to spring training. Solzer called up. Johan Ramirez, who's been eating innings for the Mets and got his tits lit in the eighth inning 48 hours ago or so, is sent down. He's DFA'd, so we'll see what happens if he stays in the organization or not. Johan Ramirez, thank you for your service, sir. I do think we'll be seeing more of you, however. I don't think you're going to get picked up, but we'll soon find out what happens on that front. We advance further in this ball game Again, botch call by the third base sump that we see there in the sixth inning. Again, Arcia rips one to third base, hot corner Brett Beatty. First, it's called foul. Then it's called fair. So which one is it? Yet, because of the fact that it's this ump making this stupid-ass decision he makes, oh, it's okay. We're going to give it to him. You know, it's it's fine. You know, we're all good. You know, we're going to say foul, even though it's fair, even though you butchered the call. Arcia then gets himself an infield single not long after. And then Darno drives him in with an opposite field RBI double. Travis is still butt hurt by Brody Van Wagner, cutting him after going over 24 and a half years ago. And truthfully, I don't blame him. I'd be pissed too. Remember Travis Darno, the LA Dodgers legend? Bet you do. Uh, but now we go a little bit further here. Brandon Nemo in the seventh, everybody. You know what, Brandon? Brandon says, we're down 5-4. We don't got to be down 5-4, all right? The rest of the lineup might not be in their full groove today, but I am. I'm back in center field. I'm feeling good in Hotlander right now. Oh, what? You're going to bring in A.J. Mentor? You think I give a damn about your lefty-lefty matchup? No, I don't. Dead center. You're out of here. Brandon Nimmo ties the ball game for a second time tonight by a final, not final score, a current score at that point of 5-5. Five and we have so much more baseball that happens after that one, folks. But let's appreciate greatness. Let's appreciate a Brandon Nimmo that in one game alone, single-handedly jumped his OPS from 400-something to 819 with a 212 average. If you'd, if you'd ask me if Kyle Schwarber was batting leadoff today, I'd say yes with the bombs. And I'd actually say no because Schwarber ain't going contact. Nimmo still went four for four with five RBIs. Unbelievable production from Brandon. What a stud. Cannot say enough great things about his game today. And again, if this is the best we're going to get from Brandon all series long, that's completely fine. What a tremendous game by our veteran outfielder on that big payday of a contract and for good reason. In the bottom of the seventh, Austin Riley gets on with a walk. Jake Diekman then comes in. At that point, Cole Solzer's day is done. He gives the Mets a total of one shutty, two hits, one earned run allowed, so no shutty. Ignore me there. I'm just all over the place. If you couldn't tell, I'm literally ranting. Grant, I'm pumped the F up. It is April 8th, and we finally have a good baseball game. This is the first time since what feels like July of 2022 that I have an exciting Metropolitan win to discuss. We covered just under 100 games last season, folks. 
you have no idea how much I've been me how much I've been wanting a game like this. You have no idea how much we have been dying for entertaining baseball. My man Jack Jolly all with the ten dollar haul. Let's fucking go, Mets, Jack. Let's love to see it. We gotta get you in here for one of these post game shows sooner or later. Haven't taken any guess yet. Why? Because this team's been horrendous in a lot of ways. But hey, the winning continues, so will the guest spots. Jolly, happy to have you in here. Rawr! You love to see it. Absolutely juiced up. You guys know who Jolly is. Let's get some hype and love in the chat for my man who recently hit 100,000 subscribers. Congratulations again, Jolly, you sexy beast. As we advance further in this one, folks, again, Mets tied 5-5 as we get to the 8th, all right? Nice double play turn by Pete. Pete, if you're not going to give me anything offensively, if you're going to give me donuts, the offers that we see in the lineup right now, I at least make up for it defensively. Pete Alonso does exactly that. Huge double play turn, turns it back to Frankie. Frankie back to Lindor. There you go, that does it, and we get out of that jam. In the 8th then, Brett the Met. Brett Beatty, folks, you know how I said he's batting 333? He's batting 333, folks. He gets his another hit here in the eighth. A single and a stolen bag. Heads up play and a pass ball. Gets there in time. Love that, Beatty. And because of Beatty's aggressiveness, that would be huge in this Mets victory. Without that, they may very well not win this one. You never know. But hey, DJ Stewart, DJ Stewart, who has zero hits coming into the eighth inning, he says, you know what? I'm sorry, Pierce Johnson. You're a bum. I'm better than you. Nuke! Two-run shot. Mets get the lead. They're up 7-5. I was jaw-dropped for what felt like so long that flies could have not only flew in my mouth, but they could have started a family. That is how taken back I was by DJ Stewart ripping a bomb. Yes, this man went Barry Bonds towards the end of last season for, say, the last, you know, 20, 30 games. Hit 10 bombs. Great story. I told you guys I didn't want DJ cracking the roster all the way back in, like, November in my five Mets who won't return video. DJ did nothing in spring. He's done nothing this season. And he absolutely pissed on that thing to give the Mets the lead. That is what I mean. You can't make it up sometimes. But, hey, we'll take it. I'm taking it every day of the week, DJ. DJ, I love you. I still don't think you should be here once JDM's in the lineup. But it doesn't mean that I don't love you for this moment tonight. These are things we care about, DJ. And I hope for your sake, because you're not leaving the Mets just yet, that you can start to build some momentum here. Maybe give the Mets a little bit of a tough situation on their hands. Maybe you can be... An absolute heater this entire week. We would love to see that, DJ. As you guys see, again, that's the Mets lineup as a whole. But as we go back into this one, there's the pitching. We, we talked about that, too. Let's stay actually on it for a second because Drew Smith, guys. Drew Smith, we've all been heavy critics of. We know that. Drew Smith had a far from easy or comfortable outing that we would see in this ballgame. After Harris is walked by Jake Diekman, because of course, Jake, again, this is what you get with the Diekmeister. He might strike you out, but he's going to have a six walks per nine because he walks everyone and his mother. And Mark, I love you, Giraffe Neck, Mark, but this is why I've had gripes with Diekman for the past how many years? This is my concern because he's going to have us literally wine rip our hair out of times. Thankfully, it wasn't too bad. Just with the walk there, Truth Smith comes in, Orlando Garcia with his second hand of the day. Runners advance on a wild pitch because, of course, they do. Nothing's easy. Ronald Acuna Jr. with a walk. Albies then with the RBI walk, folks. So frustrating in that entire sequence that that took place. From Acuna getting the walk, I'm screaming at my TV. Throw him away. Throw him away. And instead, you're throwing him a 96 meatball down the plate that thankfully Ronald was behind on. He fouls it off. Then he gets walked. Albies, of course, with the RBI walk there. And then Austin Riley, thankfully, grounds out to end the inning. Mets are up by two, folks. They're up by two as we get to the ninth. Jorge Lopez, batting practice, the first couple batters he sees. Bang, bang, boom. Olsen with a double. Taylor with a massive catch in deep left field that was just shy of a game-tying home run for Marcel's second of the day. Thank you, baseball gods, for not giving that schmuck anything more than what he got today. Huge robbery. That would have, at minimum, been an RBI double off the wall there if Taylor didn't get there in time. Marte, who, of course, missed a catch earlier in the ballgame that we saw that led the Braves to get their runs. Taylor with tremendous left field defense. And again, without Tyrone Taylor, I don't know where the Mets are necessarily in this, space, in this game today. Not only with his base running, but also, of course, there with the great defense that we saw. Taylor with the huge catch, and thankfully, Jorge Lopez does what he needs to do to give the Mets an 8-7 victory, folks. Without Edwin D as in the lineup tonight, you get the job done. Without, literally, Jake Diekman, Drew Smith, Jorge Lopez, yes, those are mainstays in your in your bullpen, but the fact that you, your first six innings today 
are Julio Tehran, Reed Garrett, Cole Solzer, and they get the job done in this one is a miracle. Tyrone Taylor becomes Ozuna's effing parole officer. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. I love that. I absolutely love that. I don't know where we're at in the like count, everybody, but continue to smash that like and subscribe on. Greatly appreciate it. Help your boy get to the next short-term goal as always, folks. And thank you all so much in advance. We're trying to get a 25K subs. We're less than 50 away. Be amazing if we hit it tonight. You're in the live show if possible because we're doing a big giveaway on the channel shortly after. So be on the lookout for that. We're really excited for it. Also, shout out to my amazing sponsors at BetUS who has you covered with all your sports betting needs. And if you get in on the action now by clicking the link down below to sign up, you get 125% bonus with your first three deposits. What that means is if you deposit 100 bucks, you'll automatically get 220 to work with three times that easy again if you hammered bets my line today you're a sicko but you came out like a bandit at plus 180 odds shame on me for not betting on the Mets finally the one time I don't I'm an idiot of course shame on me for doing it regardless not doing it rather but again guys we're doing an awesome awesome giveaway with bet us right now folks we're all you need to do the first five people that email me clicking the uh clicking my email in the description at some point if you're watching this live or on replay email me a screenshot of your bet us account that has your bet us account number that's all you got to show me i don't need your info or anything like that just show that to me and i will hook you up with 25 dollars in free play all you got to do is send me you your proof that you've signed up to bet us and you have your number there your bet us account number email it to me my email is in the description of the live show here on youtube and i'm going to give away 25 dollars to the first five people that do it we've only had one person reach out thus far we got four more slots easy money literally free why not get in on the action and i hope you guys and gals have been uh, sharing you know the parlays that we've been doing our pregame shows and all that fun stuff too greatly appreciate it uh, lfgm juan diaz as always everybody guys got question question folks before we go further on this ball game i got one key question every one of you all you mets fans especially mainly you mets fans where do you rank this mets game since the second half of 2022 where do you rank this game because for me this was a prime example of a Mets team with lesser expectations, lesser pressure on their shoulders, and just not counting themselves out. Because why? Why should you? We're so early in the season. We know how crucial every single win is, obviously. But why Why count yourself out? Why be pressing? Right? If you're not Pete Alonso today, you're not pressing too much offensively. Francisco Lindor, of course, did. Lindor isn't even batting 100 yet, which is just ridiculous. But Lindor had some bad luck today, too. His BABIP is like the worst in baseball or one of the worst, which tells you he's been unlucky. But still, though, I want to see Lindor break out. We know that. Alonso's got to break out. But I got to ask, where do you rank this game since, like, the second half of the 2022 season, folks? I am not crazy. I mean, I'm crazy. I am not crazy for saying that this is easily, in my opinion, easily the most entertaining ball game the Mets have played where it went in their favor in pretty much a year and a half or close to. This is what fun baseball feels like. David West, thank you so much for the email. Just like that, guys, only three slots left for you to get free $25 in play. David, I'll get back to you in the next 24 hours or so on that one. So stay tuned. Thank you so much. WrestleMania weekend was let's says Juan Diaz. Thank you for the donation, but nothing beats a win for the Mets. LFGM. Shout out to everyone that attended WrestleMania right in, you know, right in my wheelhouse. I'm just over an hour away from Philly. Unfortunately, couldn't attend. I had a lot of buddies that did though. I saw Joe DeMeo, of course, was there too. A lot of, a lot of big wrestling fans in the baseball space as well. Hope you guys had a fantastic time. Cody Rhodes. Who saw that coming? Literally everybody. <laughs> Juan Diaz, thank you so much for the donation. I appreciate that. LFGM, brother. Oh, where's my Braves fans at? Where's my Braves fans at? Uh, let's see. First, Braves swallowing heart. Yeah. <coughs> I'd rather Phillies win the division than the crybaby uh, Braves, says Kev. So, well, so there's that. Okay. Okay. There we go. We got another email, folks. We're down to two. You down to two. And yes, yes, someone said you're going to mention Lindor. Yes, Lindor, trust me, has still been struggling. There's no denying that. Day game tomorrow. No, tomorrow's, tomorrow's game is at 720 or so, folks. And before I forget, because we're already a half hour into the show, everybody, if I haven't said it already, exciting news. I am on a new Bleacher Report segment that's coming at you every Monday. 
at 6 p.m. Eastern. Myself and Steven Peralt, who you guys might know, is the co-host with Jared Krabis on the Section 10 podcast. Jared, absolute beauty. Love them. Biggest Red Sox podcast out there. Steven is not only fantastic with his Red Sox coverage, but just baseball knowledge as a whole. Him and I have paired with Bleacher Report, and we're coming at you every week with our home run draft. So we're picking five players each week across baseball that we think are going to rake. And then we're also having the fans in the chat answering polls and whichever is the favored player in each of those polls will be their selections we did our first show today i just didn't announce it much prior because we didn't have a graphic or anything you can check it out though on the bleach report app by going to the mlb betting section and you'll see steve parole and it's the mlb home run draft me and steve had a fantastic time hope you guys can chime in next monday i'll be on br this thursday for a different segment entirely that i'll share with you tomorrow br walk off is going to post on their socials my picks his picks as well shame on me for not picking Juan Soto and instead going with Aaron Judge today when Aaron Judge was like the only one that didn't rake against Miami of course but make sure to check that out really exciting stuff I've been doing with Bleacher Report really looking forward to these continued segments where we're interacting with the fan chat through their app so again if you guys want to get involved too you can help do the home run draft with us hopefully I hit this week I'll tell you right now now I won't tell you all the picks I had but yes Braves fans you can listen to this I even picked Austin Riley I even picked Austin Riley this week to rake against my Mets because that's how much of a non-biased, non-homer fan I am, okay? And I was going to pick Matt Olson, but there's a reason why I didn't, and you'll find out if you watch this segment. But yeah, a lot of awesome picks. Had a lot of fun with it. Make sure to check it out at some point. Thank you all so much in advance. Shout out Bleacher Report. Mets were just lucky. Spencer Strider. Spencer can talk about his luckiness while he's sipping, sipping his chamomile tea on the IL, which is likely going to be for a good period of time right now. Not that I wish it. It sucked. To, it really sucks to see all the injuries happening to these young, exciting pitchers. It just shows you how much they can't handle throwing velo as consistently as they are. Shows you how much there's flaws in the game today with the pitch clock, for instance, and really ramping things up, among other things. Not using proper pitch grip usage. So, like, you know, sweat and rosin. Remember Tyler Glass now a couple years ago when he blew his. Uh, blew his elbow and how to get TJ how he's yapping about that all those things go in hand it sucks it really does and I don't wish injury on anyone hope Spencer's back out there as soon as humanly possible having said that all loving this win for the Mets loving this win against the Braves was far from pretty but they did what they needed to do what are your thoughts on the Braves losing Strider for the year is that official is it official that he's out for the year I just know that he has damage on his UCL that I haven't heard that there's an official word though that he's like legit out for the year so let me, correct me if I'm wrong in the live chat, everybody. Thank you all so much in advance. Uh, a lot of great contributions today, everybody. And again, as we went through it, Brandon Nimmo with the two home run, four hit, five RBI day. DJ Stewart with two home runs, uh, the two run home run, his first hit of the season. Reed Garrett, 2.1 shutty. Brett Beatty with three hits. I had to update the graphic late again. I was so happy about that. Beatty, look, even if Beatty's hits aren't all going to be in the air, he's hitting them where they ain't. And that's awesome. Beatty looks so comfortable at the plate right now. His defense gets better by the day. He's making at least one highlight real play. feels like every day at the hot corner. The Mets look like they finally have a consistency at the hot corner for the first time since David Wright. And we're talking David Wright like prime David Wright. I'm not comparing the two. David will always be the better one more than likely. But it's just the fact that the Mets finally feel like we finally feel like we might have something here at third base that could be more than just a short-term filler option. Brett Beatty might just become the player that warrants you to really not sniff the idea of going after Alex Bregman next offseason and stuff along those lines. Brett Beatty is doing exactly what we have been wanting from him for a very long time now. The confidence is through the roof. He looks like a stud. He's playing like a stud, and I want to see more of it. I'm eating this up for breakfast, and I hope that, again, Alonzo, Lindor, take notes. He's playing comfortable. He's playing relaxed. He's playing his game. Alonzo, you are pressing like a mofo. Lindor, if you're batting from the right, left side of the plate, you might as well not stand there because we know it's going to be an automatic out. That's where we're at with our two most important players in the lineup. So just imagine if we can get them right sooner rather than later and hopefully have the other guys in this lineup performing on full cylinders. Stolly Marte. Stanley Marte deserves so much more credit than I feel like he's been getting so far this year. We thought this man was dead. We literally thought he would be non-existent this offseason. We didn't even know if he could move his legs. I was honestly a part of me feeling like we could see him in a wheelchair in the outfield at some point. Because the man's hips just weren't working last year. He stole bags somehow, even 20 pretty much. But like how? When he couldn't do anything offensively or defensively? Stanley Marte has been consistently putting the ball in play. 
He has been a nice follow-up there in the sixth spot after Beatty. I've been liking what I've been seeing from Marte. I really have. Yes, he hasn't looked the prettiest every day defensively. Yes, there's still some glaring issues on that front. But Stanley Marte just being a productive player for this Mets team is something that a lot of us wrote off before the season even began. So to get him right now, I know it's a very small sample size, but to just show you the production he's had, a 263 average, a 700 plus OPS, these are things that you can at least be encouraged by. And yet Marte is an enigma. He really is. I just want to see, again, Stanley Marte play his game, play it well, steal some bags, get on base, Brett Beatty, 333 average, 802 OPS. Francisco Alvarez didn't even have a hit today. Oh, it is. There's no better feeling. There is no better feeling when the Mets can muster hits without even arguably one of their, not arguably, easily one of their top hitters in their lineup not production, not producing a lick. He had nothing going, and yet they still got it done. I saw the second opinion by us uh, regarding Spencer Strider, by the way. Appreciate you guys updating me in the live chat. Thank you so much. Uh, Tower, I know no one has mentioned this, but I really miss your stare segment. I know. Maybe we'll do a Wardy stare be before the end of the live show, um, or if I drag this one out a little bit. Maybe we'll do it soon, actually, because we're already at the 36-minute mark, folks, so maybe we will. But before we go further, folks, as you know, with my amazing sponsor at BetUS, we are, of course, going to be doing our latest pick of the day. So, initially heading into today's games, I had a three-pick parlay that consisted of the Arizona Diamondbacks run line. I also, let me just double-check here. I want to see. I had the Arizona Diamondbacks run line. Shame on me. I'm an asshole. They're losing 7-4 against the Rockies. Kyle Freeland somehow didn't have the worst start imaginable, of course. Um, literally, it feels like the, Bra the Braves like killed the D-backs morale after being swept ridiculous regardless though i mean it doesn't even matter why am i even talking about it the run line ain't gonna hit it ain't gonna hit they're gonna lose they're gonna lose at this rate so never mind let's talk about something that still can hit hopefully as we take a look at the latest slate of games here with bet us everybody and again continue smashing like and subscribe on as your first chopping in live on a replay as we're breaking down together a crazy a roller coaster all the way up all the way down as the metropolitans take this one by a final score of seven pardon me eight to seven i am sweating bullets everybody bullets let's get here for one second folks then we'll go further here in the live show as you know, again, click the link in the description to sign up to BetUS today. 125% bonus for your first three deposits, folks. As we take the slates, let's just look at tomorrow. Why don't we? Mets, I'm, I'm not I'm not being a homer. I'm not picking Mets. I'm sorry. I'm not doing it. <laughs> I'm really not. We got the Phillies against the Cardinals. Need I say more? Love that matchup. Honestly, I want to... I'm... No, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. D-backs run line tomorrow. If it ain't Hayne today, they got hit tomorrow. We're chasing this one because the D-backs are a very good team. They got huge boppers in that lineup. I expect guys like Euenio Suarez, Christian Walker, Cattell Marte, Lourdes Gurriel Jr. I expect these guys to rake in cores, okay? The fact that they're losing today is ridiculous. I don't know if Zach Gallon got his tits lit or what. Gallon was on the bump for the start against Freeland. They're losing 7-4 late in this one. I am still going to take the D-backs again tomorrow. I'm doubling up, and if that doesn't hit, then okay, I will focus on the Phillies Cardinals series from there. Minus 125 at minus 1.5. What does that mean in case you're wondering? What that means is the Diamondbacks tomorrow need to win their game one and make sure that they win by a couple runs so if they do not do that then of course the Rockies bet will hit but I'm gonna take here we're going a little ballsy we're going 70 to win 56 here on the Diamondbacks run line tomorrow I expect them to bounce back should they lose tonight's game and that's what we're gonna roll with my rule of thumb Tyler is roll with three wins losses 100% 100% yeah I like that I like that for sure, Nick. Thank you. Appreciate all you guys and gals that get in on the action too with our amazing sponsor at BetUS. Thank you all so much. As always, 4-6 and six now, a good dub, but the bullpen sucks. It doesn't. I mean, here's the thing. Here's the thing. The bullpen is cooked early because of the fact that we're using our best guys for three straight days. Like, why not? You know? Like, pardon me, not why not, but that's why Edwin Diaz and many other guys weren't available out of the pen today. For the Mets to muster this win without needing to desperately go to Diaz again, without needing to go to Adovino. I saw his ass warming up in the pen. I didn't want it. I didn't want it. I, I have flashbacks of Adovino against the Atlanta Braves in Atlanta. Not always the best memories. Um, so I'm really happy that the Mets were able to leg this one out with the guys that they used today. 
Because Reed Garrett, you hopefully don't need to use again this series. Again, look great today. If you need him again, hopefully not until, you know, the day game uh, for the series finale and this one on Thursday. But if you're able to get these kind of wins when you don't even have your key guys out of the pen for the most part. Deekman, of course, Smith, yes, I get that. Lopez, yes, these are factors. But they were able to get the job done. And winning is what I care about most at the end. It doesn't need to be the prettiest. And I told you guys from the jump, I just want to see the Mets have entertaining baseball for the first time in forever. I feel like we haven't had that in a long period of time. I'm very happy to see that start to transpire now, and I hope it continues. Rob, thank you for the $5 donation. Rob says, let's effing go, Wardy. Just catching up, watching the post game. Happy you're going along. Absolutely, brother. Happy to have you in here, folks. And you know what? This is where I'm going to cut things off for people that are watching on replay because we're going to have this show go on for at least another 20 minutes to half hour i want to drag this one i want this to be an hour plus long uh one tonight it's this is too good of a win not to and we're not doing it tonight folks because i don't have it set up in time but either tomorrow or at some point in this series i do intend on taking live callers so just further incentive for you guys to make sure that you're chiming into the channel each and every day pre-game coverage tomorrow will be right around 4 30 or 5 between 4.30 and 5.30 p.m. Eastern should be somewhere around that range. Ideally, I want to do it hour, hour and a half before the game start, if not long, you know, further than that. So there's some shelf life. Be, be on the lookout. Pre-game coverage tomorrow. Post-game as well. And let me just fix my camera here before I cut things off for people on replay. If I can even do that. I don't know. You guys are going to get some Wardy ASMR for a hot second. Let's see if I can get the camera to focus. And I can. So whoever, again, asked in the chat they want to see the Wardy stare, your wish is my Command, folks, I'm going to give it to you. We're going to do the Wardy stare now. What that means is I'm going to stare in this camera for a solid five seconds, if not longer, because that gives me enough time to go back and check out in YouTube studio after I'm live, where I know to cut things off for people that watch this on replay and don't necessarily want to watch the full hour version. To the replay viewers that want to watch the full extended version, I apologize. Just know that this is in you know, good faith. It's good, in good reason. The algorithm usually likes it a bit more that these shows aren't consistently an hour long that you see on replay after, again, there's only 24 hour short life from one game to the next. In times, not even 12 hours. So, got to make do with what you got. Thank you all so much for watching. People on replay, let me know your biggest takeaway down below from this crazy 8 to 7 Metropolitan victory. Everybody watching live here on YouTube and on Twitter, stay tuned. We will continue running with the show. But everyone watching on replay, thank you all so much. And as always, let's go Mets, baby. Peace out.